Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare Romania, the Italian version of an Arabic plate of the 10th century, collected in the Baghdadi cookbook. We start with ingredients. We need a chicken, cured pork fatback, onions, almonds and the spices, black pepper, cloves, caraway and coriander seeds, and then pomegranates. First, we grind the almonds in the mortar. The recipe we are preparing is collected in a 13th century cookbook, The Liber de Coquina, one of the most complete collections of medieval Italian recipes, but a few of them are reinterpretations of older recipes, for example this one, whose original version is collected in the Baghdadi cookbook. The Baghdadi cookbook is one of the most ancient books of recipes and contains two variants for Romania. As recalls in the 13th century, Simon of Genoa, in his Clavis Sanationis, a glossary of medical terms. Roman or Roman are Arabic words for malagranata, pomegranates. And the food called Romania comes from them. The Italian and Arabic versions of this recipe are quite different, but the principles are the same. We seed the pomegranates and pound the seeds in the mortar. The Arabic text recommends to take one chicken and two small chickens and cook them with chopped onions and water. Adding then olive oil and the juice of two sour pomegranates and a third pomegranate that may be sour or sweet. The Italian version too suggests mixing sweet and sour pomegranates. It's interesting to note that in ancient Rome pomegranates are a widespread fruit, but we rarely find them used as a cooking ingredient whereas they are quite common in medieval and renaissance cuisine. For further information about pomegranates in historical cooking and medicine, check out our Patreon page. The Arabic recipe then writes to add muri and the spices, the same we have chosen for this recipe, not specified in the Italian cookbook black pepper, coriander, caraway and cloves. Then we mix the pomegranate juice with the almonds and filter it. There is a fundamental difference between the Italian and the Arabic recipe, which turns into a very clear difference between the methods of preparation. The Arabic recipe calls for muri, the Italian one for cured pork fatback. The difference is fundamental to understand medieval cooking in Europe and why it is so different from ancient Roman and Greek cuisine. But first we need to explain what muri is. Muri is a sauce equivalent to garum and muria, the ancestor of colatura di alici. There are two kinds of muri, one made with barley flour fermented with salt, aromatic herbs and spices, the second made with fish. Between the 13th and the 14th century, the Italian physician Matteo Silvatico writes in his opus Pandectarum Medicine that muri, almuria and garros are the same. The past week we published a video about how to make garum in the traditional way. You find the link in the description below. Now we mix the onion. 
for one chicken, we used a medium size onion. The function of Murray is to give sapidity to the plate, being naturally present a certain amount of glutamate. Exactly the same reason why Romans and Greeks used garum in almost all their plates. Now we understand why the Italian version uses instead cured pork fatback, called lardo in Italian. Without muri or garum, it is necessary to find a substitute that can give sapidity enough to the plate, otherwise quite plain. Lardo, as well as cheese, becomes in the centuries the ingredient that substitutes garum and other similar ingredients. Lardo isn't a medieval invention, clearly, but in ancient Rome its use was more limited, especially to plebeian plates, whereas the cooking fat for high-end cuisine was always olive oil. We slice and mince the cured pork fat back. The methods for the Arabic and the Italian recipe are different, and the main reason is the use of muri and olive oil for the first and cured pork fat back for the latter. The combination of muri, chicken and olive oil doesn't require a further addition of flavor, being incredibly tasty without other ingredients. This is the reason why the chicken is not seared in olive oil, there is no need. It is interesting to notice that most Roman dishes are prepared in this identical way. Now we cut the chicken. Lardo instead must be melted to spread its intense flavor and to sear the meat becomes inevitable. Otherwise, the stew wouldn't be sepid enough. We melt the cured pork fat back, then we add the onion and the chicken. Another fundamental difference between the Arabic and the Italian recipe is that the first is very light to digest, whereas the Italian Romania is a quite heavy dish, like most medieval Italian plates. The necessity to give flavor to the plates with lardo, indeed, means also the addition of a huge quantity of fats, completely unnecessary when we cook instead Arabic, Roman or Greek dishes. This is impossible to avoid, muri and garum give a lot of flavor without the addition of calories, lardo and cheese instead give flavor and a lot of calories. Meanwhile, we grind the spices in the mortar. Black pepper and cloves are among the most used spices in Italian medieval cuisine. But in the medical books, we find frequently the other two added in this recipe, caraway and coriander seeds, widely used by the ancient Mediterranean populations and suggested by the Arabic author. Both caraway and coriander seeds are used just in one recipe in the Liber de Coquina. We add the almond milk and the spices. We cooked the chicken for about one hour, but the time can change depending on the chicken you use. If the cooking liquid dries up, add a little water. But if you cook it covered over a low heat, you shouldn't need it. This chicken stew is intensely flavored with spices and cured pork fat back, with a hint of sourness given by the pomegranate juice. The meat is incredibly tender and the flavors delicious and well balanced. It's surely a dish worth a try to experience the extraordinary influence of the Mediterranean culinary traditions upon medieval Italian cuisine and the continuity between the ancient world and the Middle Ages with an excellent dish very simple to make. 
If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, subscribe our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you.